What is up everyone? It's the Munch and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and soon to be Happy New Year. Today we've got a special video because we're going to be taking a look at the worst Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Well, not exactly, but there have been some popularity polls that came out recently from Japan, which rank the most popular Pokemon of the Paldea region. Not just new Pokemon from Gen 9, but just any Pokemon found in Paldea, and the results are pretty interesting. With over 177,000 votes received, Tinkaton took first place with a landslide victory, almost 2,000 more votes than the second place, which goes to Claude Sire and third place going to Meowskarada with 5,300 votes. And yeah, I think it's no surprise Tinkaton is by far the most popular Pokemon of Paldea with so many memes coming out, specifically about the fact that it like kills Corviknights. Even though the Pokedex entry for Tinkatuff talks about how it gathers metal from other Pokemon like Ponyard and B-Sharp, people seem to be really obsessed with specifically the fact that it launches rocks with its giant hammer at the sky to knock down Corviknights and harvest their metal bodies. I will say it's probably the most interesting predator-prey relationship in Pokemon. Like, we've all heard of Pidgeys coming down and eating Caterpie, but you would never expect this to be Corviknight's biggest enemy. Even though, in reality, Corviknight kinda counters Tinkaton, or at least it can't really do much damage to it. Like, as far as I know, Tinkaton doesn't learn any moves that are super effective against Corviknight, and being a physical attacker, Corviknight pretty much tanks up anything it throws at it, so Kind of interesting that the Pokedex is totally the opposite. Also interesting that Tinkaton can't learn the move Rock Throw when that's literally what its Pokedex entry is describing. I feel like that was definitely a missed opportunity. But Claude Sire coming in second is a welcome surprise. Like, I love Claude Sire personally, but I didn't realize just how many people also love this derpy little Claude. <laughs> I think the design has a lot to do with it here, like it's just so cute and you can draw its face in so many ways, like just the default face is so derpy and adorable, and the fact that you can find Paldean Wooper so early in the game means a lot of people had one on their team, adding to Claude Sire's growing popularity. Miascarada at third place though, I am very surprised by because of the amount of people that were clamoring towards Sprigatito staying on all four legs. We didn't end up getting that, and yet still, Miascarada is the most popular final starter evolution of Paldea, by far actually, because you'll see, we don't even have the other final starter evolution in the top 30. Oh wait, no, there's Skeledurge at 29. But Coco actually managed to snag 4th place with 4,400 votes, so yeah, again, the gap between it and Miascarada is pretty massive. But Spirigatito is also up there in the top 30 at 14th place with over 2,000 votes, and I guess at this point I might as well show you guys the full top 30 so you can see that there is something missing here. Neither Quaxly nor its evolutions made it into the top 30, which is really interesting to me that there's such a big difference between one of the starters specifically. I mean, I think I have a pretty good idea of why Miascarada ended up being so popular compared to the others, but, uh, you know, I think in terms of design, it does look the coolest out of these three final starter evolutions, at least. Now, down below, we can see the rest of the poll up to the top 50 Pokemon, and still, there's no Quaxly. There is Quaquaval at position 32 with 1,200 votes, which is kind of sad. Like, if you combine Miascarada and Sprigatito, they have over 7,000 votes. Fue Coco plus Skeledurge have, like, around 5,000, and then Quaquaval sits alone at just a thousand, which is really, really sad. And I guess it personally hurts more because I picked Quaxly as my starter and loved it throughout the whole journey, even when it evolved into Quaquaval. I love seeing its goofy little dance every time I sent it out into battle, though it was a little distracting at times. And I wonder if that's why people don't like it, because I remember seeing on Twitter people redesigning it or talking about how its butt is very weird and I don't know if people are uncomfortable with its massive behind, or maybe just don't like the way it sissies that walk, but clearly Quaquaval is the least popular of the starters, and I'm very, very surprised at the fact that Quaxly didn't even make the top 50. Poor Quaxly has even been left alone on the Pokemon Center shelves, which if you don't know is like a real life store in Japan where you can buy Pokemon products and plushies and stuff, and yeah, the shelves are bare of Fuecoco's Brigatito, but poor Quaxly is just left sitting there 
I almost want to believe this photo was set up, because there's no way there's still this many Quaxley plushies left compared to the other two, but then again, the poll we just took a look at was in Japan, and the Pokemon Center is in Japan, so maybe Quaxley really is that disliked over there, even in its base form, which I guess I can understand the dislike of Quackleball a little more, but Quaxley though? What the heck did Quaxley do to you guys? <laughs> It's literally not even in the top 50, which I find crazy, and I'm really curious to see if this poll had only been Paldean Pokemon, where Quaxley would have been, because, I mean, let me count real quick. We've got 29 out of these 50 Pokemon are not from Gen 9, which is over half of the list. I find kind of crazy that uh, there's so many evolutions too, like we've got pretty much all the evolutions that aren't the original three, which is kind of sad. Even Eevee made it up here at 28th place. Bro, how the frick is Altaria at 43rd? How do you get almost a thousand votes? I didn't realize there were that many Altaria fans. And Charizard's at 25th, man. He's not even in the base game. I mean, I guess there were the Terra Raids, and I think this poll was conducted afterwards, but Charizard barely even made it into Gen 9, and he's still up here at 25th. That is wild to me. Also interesting that Cyrilege is at 5th, and Armor Rouge didn't even make top 50 like that's another big divide i wasn't expecting i mean even before the games came out it was pretty clear serulege was like way more popular than armor rouge but i still expected both of them to be equally liked considering their version exclusives like where are the pokemon scarlet players at y'all are letting serulege really outshine our boy armor rouge the arm cannon mega man looking but again, I'm not surprised because it's like the edgy Pokemon and those always seem to be popular. Kind of like Lucario who snuck up there at 9th place. You can see Lucario and Gardevoir sitting there comfy at 9th and 10th place. Even though I don't think Serulege is really in the same category. I mean, it is a humanoid shape, but you know, Gardevoir and Lucario have a bit more of a spicy reputation. <laughs> Oh god, now y'all got me curious if people really are doing R34 of Serulege, because I don't think that's the reason it's so popular. It's probably just the design is like really cool looking. And Tatsugiri at 6th place is also a little bit surprising to me, because I know people love the combo of it and Dondozo in battle, but I didn't think it'd be this popular. Like, I guess people really like the design of it, so much so in fact that two forms of Tatsugiri made it into the top 50. You can see down here... The red one, which I don't know the names of them. There's like the curly, the stretchy, and curly, droopy, and stretchy. So stretchy's the one that didn't make top 50. But how the heck, same Pokemon, just different coloring, make it into the top 50, bro? That's kind of crazy to me. Almost 4,000 votes, or actually, yeah, over 4,000 if you combine both of them. Which is also so much more than Quaxley and Quackaball. I feel so bad for the derpy duckling who evolves into the sassy duckling. The rest of these I'm not too surprised by, like Gengar, always a fan favorite. Umbreon I thought was the most popular evolution, but I guess Sylveon takes that spot now. And Slitherwing at 8th place is probably the most baffling to me because I don't really understand the love for Slitherwing. I mean, it's a bug and fighting type and has the exact same base stat total as Buzzwool, which was just two generations ago and in my opinion has a much cooler design for a bug fighting type, like it's a super buff mosquito. I don't really see bug and fighting with Slitherwing here. In fact, I almost see like a bug dragon, which again, missed opportunity to have the first bug and dragon type right here. If there are any Slitherwing fans in the comments that can let me know why it's so cool or why you think it ended up so high on the list, definitely let me know. But another thing that kind of sticks out here is Goraidon versus Miraidon. Only a 300 vote difference, but that difference made 5 spots on the list. Which again, Pokemon Scarlet, like, I'm always gonna rep, and Goraidon is my boy. Definitely cooler than Miraidon with its weird digital eyes. And that goes for all the future paradoxes, as on the list you can actually see, there's not a single future paradox? Oh wait, no, we have Iron Valiant, the future form of Gardevoir slash Gallade. But yeah, that's the only one on the list. Except Miraidon, which I guess also counts. Uh, we have Fluttermane and Screamtail up here for the past forms. And of course the uh, Slitherwing, which I mentioned earlier. So that's three past forms, only one future form. To be honest, I am very surprised there aren't more Paradox Pokemon up here. Like, I thought they were going to be a lot more popular. And I guess I got to keep in mind this is in Japan, where I guess people think a little bit differently. Because I feel that if they did this poll, like, international or at least 
English-speaking countries, there would probably be a lot more people voting for the Paradox Pokemon. That's just my speculation based off the fact that I see English-speaking tweets most of the time, and yeah, there's a lot more love for the Paradox Pokemon in this Twitter sphere versus, I guess, Japan, where we only had four Paradox Pokemon total making the list if you don't count the legendaries out of like 12, which is kind of crazy. And maybe shows just how much people love the OG Pokemon, like Luxray is up here too, the OG Volcarona, and Quagsire, which I'm guessing these two made it up so high because of the fact that there's other forms of them in the game also sprouting up their popularity. But then again, Hydreigon is up here, and Iron Jugulus isn't, like the future form of it, so that's a little bit strange. Also, if we took out non-Paldean Pokemon, the top 10 would actually look like this. With Palma sneaking in there, I am very surprised to see Palma this high actually, considering how many people hate on the fact that it doesn't really change from Palmy to Palma. And speaking of Palmy, it's also up there in the top 20. Like, what the heck, man? Maybe Japan isn't so crazy about this evolution feeling lazy, and they actually just like the fact that they finally made a useful Pikachu clone. I know maybe it's not the best in competitive battling, but I've definitely grown to like Palma and Palmy, but it's middle evolution Palmo, definitely the uh, estranged middle child, which kind of applies to the starter Pokemon as well. None of the second stage starter evolutions made the top 50, which isn't really surprising. But what I am still surprised and frankly appalled by is the lack of Quaxly in this top 50. I suppose there will always be one starter Pokemon that gets left behind, I just didn't expect it to be my favorite derpy duckling. So in honor of Quaxly, I'm also going to dub today International Quaxly Appreciation Day because this is just absolute slander that our derpy duckling did not make the top 50. I will not stand for this, so please, can we get some love for Quaxly? What do you guys think of this list though? Were any of your favorite Paldean Pokemon robbed of a spot in the top 50? Let me know in the comments below your top 5 or top 10 favorite Paldean Pokemon. And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video.